In this video, we'll walk through creating your own certificate authority on a Mac so that you can run HTTPS sites locally without issue. To get started, you might need to install the OpenSSL command line application. To do that, if you don't have it already, install Homebrew, which will allow you to install OpenSSL. Next, we can create a location to store our local certificate files. This is not a requirement, but it makes it easier to find the keys later. With that set up, we're ready to generate the private key to become a local CA called myca.key. OpenSSL will ask for a passphrase, which we recommend not skipping and keeping safe. The passphrase will prevent anyone who gets your private key from generating a root certificate of their own. The output should look like this. Next, we generate a root certificate called myca.pem. You will be prompted for the passphrase of the private key you just chose and a bunch of questions. The answers to those questions aren't that important. They show up when looking at the certificate, which you will almost never do. We suggest making the common name something that you'll recognize as your root certificate in a list of other certificates. You should now have two files, myca.key, your private key, and myca.pem, your root certificate. Congratulations, you're now a CA. Well, sort of. To become a real CA, you need to get your root certificate on all the devices in the world. But we don't need to become a real CA. We just need to be a CA for the devices you own. We need to add the root certificate to any laptops, desktops, tablets, and phones that access your HTTPS sites. This can be a bit of a pain, but the good news is that we only have to do it once. Our root certificate will be good until it expires. Here's how to add the root certificate via macOS's Keychain app. If required, make sure that you've selected the System Keychain. Then go to File, Import Items. Select your private key file, i.e. myca.pem. Search for whatever you answered as the common name previously. Double click on your root certificate in the list. Expand the trust section. Change the when using the certificate select box to always trust. During the process, it may ask you to enter your password or scan your fingerprint, do that. If you use something like ngrok to browse your local development sites on mobile devices, you might need to add the root certificate to those devices as well. On iOS devices, you can do so fairly easily by following these steps. First, email the root certificate to yourself so you can access it on your iOS device. Make sure you use the default mail app to access the email. Tap on the attachment in the email on your iOS device. It will prompt you to review the profile in the settings app. Open the settings app and click profile downloaded near the top. Click install in the top right and then install again on the wording screen. Once installed, hit close and go back to the main settings page. Go to general and then to about. Scroll to the bottom and click on certificate trust settings. Enable your root certificate under Enable Full Trust for Root Certificates. Now we're a CA on all of our devices and we can sign certificates for any new dev sites that we need HTTPS. First, we create a private key for the dev site. Note that we name the private key using the domain name URL of the dev site. This is not required, but it makes it easier to manage if you have multiple sites. You'll get all the same questions you did previously, and again, your answers don't matter. In fact, they matter even less because you won't be looking at the certificate in a list next to others. Finally, we create an X509 v3 certificate extension config file, which is used to define the subject alternative name or SAN for the certificate. In our case, we'll create a configuration file called hellfish.test.ext containing the following text. We'll be running OpenSSL X509 because the X509 command allows us to edit certificate trust settings. In this case, we're using it to sign the certificate in conjunction with the config file, which allows us to set the subject alternative name. Now we run the command to create the certificate. Using our CSR, the CA private key, the CA certificate, and the config file. We now have three files, hellfish.test.key, 
the private key, hellfish.test.csr, the certificate signing request file, and hellfish.test.crt, the signed certificate. We can configure local web servers to use HTTPS with the private key and the signed certificate. If you're using MAMP Pro version 6.0, they introduced built-in SSL support. You can enable it by checking the SSL box under your selected web server. If you prefer to use the locally signed certificate we've just set up, you can do this by enabling the expert view, clicking on the SSL tab and choosing your certificate and certificate key files. We don't have to create a new CA for each site fortunately. We can just repeat this last part of creating a certificate for any other dev sites. So there you have it how to become your own local certificate authority to sign your local SSL certificates and use HTTPS on your local sites. Hopefully this will eliminate the dreaded your connection is not private message on your local development websites. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.